Good morning, Skidmore Christian Church family. Pastor Jack here. Last week, or a few weeks ago, where we left off, um, Nathan had come to David to basically hold him accountable, sent by God. He basically told him this parable of this uh, rich man who had a neighbor come to him, and, and instead of taking a sheep from one of his uh, vast flocks, he basically took a neighbor or took a sheep from his neighbor, um, and the neighbor treated it like a daughter and loved it dearly and was one of its most important possessions. And he, the rich man basically stole that sheep or took that sheep and, and had it killed for his visitor. And David was outraged and basically said the man should be held accountable for this. And, and uh, Nathaniel and the plot twist goes, oh, by the way, you're this man. And, and Nathaniel basically goes, this is what's going to happen because of your choice to take, you know, uh, sleep with Uriah, the Hittite's wife, Bathsheba, and then covered up by having him killed. All of that to say, as we pick up the account in 2 Samuel 13, we begin with the fallout of that decision. Let's pick it up in uh, chapter 13, verse 1 of 2 Samuel. Sometime passed. David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar, and David's son Am Amnon was infatuated with her. Amnon was frustrated to the point of making himself sick over his sister Tamar because she was a virgin, but it seemed hopeless to do anything to her. Amnon had a friend named um, Jonadab, a son of David's brother Shemia. Jonadab was a very shrewd man, and he asked Amnon, why are, why are you, the king's son, so miserable every morning? Won't you tell me? Amnon replied, I am in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jonadab said to him, lie down on your bed and pretend you're sick. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, please let my sister Tamar come and let, me, let her eat something. Let her play, prepare a meal in my presence so I can watch and eat from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to him, Please let my sister Tamar come and make a couple of cakes in my presence so I can eat from her hand. David sent word to Tamar to, at the palace, Please go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare a meal for him. At this point, so so one of the things that we have to keep in context here is the fact that Absalom was David's firstborn son. And so keep in mind that David had many uh, wives at this point. And at this point, um, you know, you have the differentiation of, of Absalom, the oldest, and Amnon, um, a younger brother. And Tamar comes into the picture, and most likely she is a half-sister um, to, to um, Amnon, and Amnon is infatuated with her, and he wants to be with her, and, and you know, he feels like he's desperately in love with her. And, and as we continue in this story, there's, there seems to be some, some pathway for there to be a relationship between these two if it's kind of done the right way, but, but he doesn't want to do it the right way. He, he wants to act deceitfully, and all of that to say is, you know, he's downtrodden and his face is downcast and, you know, one of his cousins basically sees him and says, hey, what's wrong? Why is the, why is the king's son so sad? And, and, and by the way, if you're the king's son, there's rarely, rarely much to be sad over. You have kind of the world uh, at your feet in some ways. And all of that to say is Jonadab basically says, you know, why are you sad? Tell me why. He basically admits to his brother that he's... He's uh, in love with, you know, Tamar, uh, but there doesn't feel like there's anything he can do about it. So, so Jonadab basically, a shrewd man, comes up with this ruse to get David to send Tamar to his house. And, and so he lies down in six. They send word to the king. The king comes. What's going on? And he requests that Tamar basically is brought to his house to, to serve him. Continuing on in verse 8, then Tamar went to, the, went to his house while Amnon was lying down. She took dough and kneaded it and made cakes in his presence and baked them. She brought the pan and set it in front of him. 
but he had refused to eat. Amnon said, everyone leave me, and everyone left him. Bringing the meal to the bedroom, Amnon told Tamar, so I can bring them, bring the meal to the, to the bedroom, Amnon told Tamar, so I can eat from your hand. Tamar took the cakes she had made and went um, to her brother Amnon's room, and when she brought them to him to eat, she, he grabbed her and said to her, come sleep with me, my sister. Don't, my brother, she cried, don't disgrace me, for such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't commit this outrage. Where could I go with my humiliation and you, you would be like one of the outrageous fools in Israel's. Please speak to the king, for, won't he, for he won't keep me from you. But he refused to listen to her, and because she was stronger than he was stronger than she was, he he disgraced her by raping her. So, so David basically commands Tamar to go take care of her brother Amnon. Amnon goes, uh, you know, she comes and and basically says, "Here's the food that the king commanded me to prepare for you." He refuses to eat. He tells all of his servants to go out. By the way, servants who should have been feeding him and taking care of him. And uh, he basically tells her, you know, hey, I want to have breakfast in bed. So I want to go sit in my bed and I want you to feed me by your by uh, your own hand. And so it wasn't enough that she came. It wasn't enough that she cooked for him. He was basically saying, I want you to feed me. And all of this to say is they go into the bedroom and, and he basically makes a pass at her and says, I want to sleep with you. And she basically responds and says, don't do this disgraceful thing. And, and the heart-rending part of this, if they were full-blooded siblings, this is, uh, sibling, or this is incest and commanded against in the scriptures. But, but one of the things that we have to understand is that there's a right way of things, doing things and there's a wrong way of doing things. And so many times there is a process to get where we want to go and to do, uh, to get what we want in our lives. But many times the devil wants to come and usurp that and go, you know, why, why should you have to wait? Uh, just get what you want now, please yourself now. And, and it's heartrending because, um, you know, there's this, this thing called, uh, it's not very in vogue in our, in our time called delayed gratification. You know, if we will choose to honor God, if we will choose to do things the right way, if we will choose to uplift and, and glorify the Lord and walk in obedience to him, he will, scripture tells, excuse me, scripture tells us he will give us the desires of our hearts. And so, and what's so beautiful about that is God will give us many, many, many things that are in our heart that we desire. And what's even more beautiful than that is he will help us to have a heart after him and to want what he wants for our lives. And all of that to say is, is that's where we can have joy and contentment in this life when we can we can basically just be contented on what the Lord has for us and and so all of that to say is this is before Amnon there's a there was a path to victory for him if he had chosen to do it the right way and and it sounds like and, and very obviously he doesn't so he grabs her and sleeps with her and disgraces her and 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 after he does so all he's left with was shame let's see how he responds Here we go. Verse 15. So Amnon hated Tamar with such intensity that he hated her, um, that he hated in hatred that he hated her with greater. Uh, so Amnon hated Tamar with such intensity that the hatred he hated her with was greater than the love he had loved her with. Get out of here, he said. No, she cried. Sending me, me away is much worse than the great wrong that you've already done to me. But he refused to listen to her. Instead, he called the servant who waited on him. Get this away from me. Throw her out and bolt the door behind her. Ammon's servant threw her out and bolted the door behind her. Now Tamar was wearing a long sleep garment because this is what the king's virgin daughters wore. Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the long sleeve garment she was wearing. She put her hand on her head and went away crying. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has your brother Amnon been with you? Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. So Tamar lived as a desolate woman in the house of her brother Absalom. So, so this is a heartbreaking circumstance because of this trespass uh, and, and indignity uh, that Amnon basically 
transgressed against uh, Tamar with, it was heartbreaking because he's suddenly the, the love he professed to have turned to deep hatred and, and now she's the symbol of this transgression and this trespass that he perpetrated. And by the way, um, yeah, you know, if this was in his heart and this is what he carries out, then he has this to carry the rest of his life. And so when he sees her, he sees the transgression that he, that, that he, he carried out. And so all of that to say is he tries to send her away and she goes, no, you know, you're not though, sending me away. Would he be even be worse than, than what you've already done to me? And by the way, her innocence, her purity had been stolen from her, had been taken from her. And, and, and so all of that to say is, is, you know, he was in a circumstance where what he really at this point should have done is gone to David and said, this is what I did. And this is, you know, I hope I, I want, to her to, move, to be my wife and um you know it still would have been a, a terrible tragedy but it would not have been as terrible as what happens next and he tries to send her away she refuses to go he calls a servant and says throw her out she's thrown out to the street and basically she uh, as a sign of the transgression and the sign of her brokenness she basically tears the garments off of this beautiful dress with sleeves that the king's daughters, the virgin daughters, wore as a as a you know symbol of their purity, and puts uh, dust on her head, and and she goes away weeping. And and this whole picture is a sign of this transgression that had happened to her, that her purity is gone. And so she goes to her brother Absalom's house. He sees the condition she is in, and and he immediately goes, "Is it Amnon who did this to you?" And she acknowledges it. And at this point, he, he tries to soothe her and go, you know, try not to take this to heart, you know, and, he, and she ends up living as a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. And so all of that to say is, is she had this path of her life that Amnon basically tr tragically um, stole from her. And what's so beautiful about the Lord is that when people when people uh, experience these things, you know, there's this question about, you know, when, when you have an event like that happen, your, the path of your life forward is always marked by this terrible event. And, and it was interesting when we were at Bible college or we were at Bible college, we were at camp. We did Bible question and answers. Um, every day or the first four days of camp where a panel of pastors would get up and kids would ask their questions and the pastors would do their best to answer from the scriptures exactly what it says. And it was heartrending one day. Um, somebody put, if you've been raped, can you, are you still pure in the eyes of the Lord? And, and what's so heartrending, first of all, the fact that that would be a, a, a question at a junior high camp. It, it just goes to show you why that camp is so exceedingly important because of the fact that there's students in our community who have gone through terrible, incredible, di incredibly difficult circumstances and they need the Lord and they need to know what the Lord says to them because they are living every moment of every day with the aftermath of transgressions that others have perpetrated upon them. And all of that to say is, is what's so beautiful about who our God is, is that he can make, you know, there's a wonderful song that says that he makes beauty from ashes. And, and God can take a tragic, horrendous circumstance. And because he is God, he can somehow turn it on its head and redeem it and give purity and holiness in a circumstance where it feels like there is no possible way you could feel right after that circumstance, God can bring healing and bring wholeness and he can, he can redeem uh, terrible, terrible circumstances. And so all of that to say is we have to be a people who come alongside those who are broken and, and difficult and we have to, you know, hold their hand and walk them through what they're going through. And, and you know, I just pray that we would continue uh, to be an authentic people that that we're not play acting this thing called Christianity, that we are truly deeply in love with Jesus, that we are truly and uh, honestly following him to the best of our ability, but that we are also uh, acknowledging our own brokenness and our own challenges uh, that, you know, God is doing for us what what he can do for others. And, and so he meets us in our tragedy. He meets us in our brokenness. You know, there's even a possible way for Amnon to re receive repentance 
uh, if he repents to receive forgiveness of sins and and restoration and if that were possible and and the bottom line is is every single one of us have to do business with god um one of the things that we have to keep in mind as we're moving forward is that you know it's hard for me not to think of how much that this could be connected to and linked to david's um transgression and not that his children are are directly being punished for basically david's sin but i do believe that there are consequences to actions and and all of that to say let's see how it continues on when king david heard about all of these things he was furious and absalom didn't say anything to amnon either good nor bad because he hated amnon since he disgraced his sister tamar two years later absalom sheep shearers were at baal hazer near aphraim and Absalom invited the king's sons. Then he went to the king and said, Your servants just hired sheep shearers. Will the king and his servants please come to your servant? The king replied to Absalom, No, my son, we should not all go, or we would be a burden to you. Although Absalom urged him, he wasn't willing to go, though he did, not, he did bless him. If not, Absalom says, Please let your, my brother Amnon go with us. The king asked him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him, and he sent Amnon and all of the king's sons. So basically, now, out now Absalom, it's time for Absalom, Absalom's ruse. So he goes to the king. He says, "I've hired sheep shears. Let the king and all of his sons come, and and you know, functionally have their their uh, sheep all sheared." Uh, sheared and um, king kind of goes well no nah, i'm not going to come and and he goes well just you know send amnon then and he goes well why should amnon come and he pressed him and urged him to you know have this taken place so basically david sent word to amnon and some of the other brothers of the uh, sons of the king to go to absalom um in this circumstance and uh <clears throat> and the king finally sends his sons Continuing on in verse 28. Now Absalom commanded his, the young man watch for Amnon until he is good, in a good mood from wine. When I order you to strike Amnon, then kill him. Don't be afraid. I am the one who has commanded you. Be strong and valiant. So Absalom's young man did his Amnon to Amnon just as Absalom had commanded. Then all of the rest of the king's sons got up and they fled. each fled on his mule. While they were on the way, a report reached David. Absalom struck down all the king's sons. Not even one has survived. In response, the king stood up and tore his clothes and lay down on the ground, and all of his servants stood by with their to clothes torn. But Jonadab said to, the king, to David's brother, son of David's brother, Sh Shema, spoke up, My lord must not think that they have killed all of the young men, the king's sons, because only... Amnon is dead. In fact, Absalom has planned this ever since the day Amnon disgraced his sister Tamar. So now, my lord, king, don't take seriously the report that says all of the king's sons are dead. Only Amnon is dead. So, <coughs> basically, uh, Absalom tells his young men, he says, they're all coming, they're gonna, we're going to have basically a celebration, wait till Amnon is uh drunk functionally uh he's drinking and and he says when he is you know i forget exactly even how he says it i don't know why so all of that to say is 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 once he's drunk strike him down and so this is exactly what comes to pass amnon comes absalom knew that he basically would drink too much he starts drinking and the young men basically respond to uh absalom's command to strike amnon down they kill him and all of the when this happens all of the king's other sons basically get on their mules and flee um and so this false report or erroneous report gets back to to david that that absalom basically had all of the king's sons killed and uh um, jonadab basically comes and says you know what it wasn't all of your sons it was only 
um, Amnon, and he basically says, by the way, Absalom's had it in his heart for the last two years to do this ever since Amnon transgressed against Tamar. And, and so all of that to say, um, David finally gets the, the true report, continuing in verse 26. Oh, excuse me, not 26. In, uh, continue in verse 34, excuse me. Meanwhile, Absalom had fled, and when the young man who was standing watch looked up, there were many people coming from the west, from the road west of him, from the side of the mountain. Um, Jonadab said to the king, look, the king's sons have come. It's exactly like your servant said. Just as he finished speaking, the king's sons entered and wept loudly. Then the king and all of his servants also wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, son of Amahud, king of Jeshur. And David mourned for his son every day. After Absalom had fled to Jeshur and had been there for three years, King David longed to go to Absalom. And David had finished, for David had finished grieving over Amnon's death. And so at this point, um, Absalom basically did what he thought he, he should to vindicate his, his sister Tamar by having, by having Amnon murdered. He basically flees because of this action, knowing that there would be consequences for killing his brother. Um, you know, David basically, all of the, the other king's sons return to David weeping. He knows that they're okay. Um, he mourns for Amnon for quite some time. Um, but then after that morning is over, he, he basically um, longs for Absalom and, and misses Absalom. And so all of that to say is, is you know, you kind of get to this prophecy from David going, or from Nathan about David going, you know what, because of these choices that you've made, there's going to be consequences the rest of your life. And we're starting to see those consequences carried out. Um, David, you know, there was a few things that David should not have done. He should not have multiplied wives. He should not have, uh, you know, transgressed against the Lord and, and sleeping with Bathsheba and then having Uriah killed, you know, and, and, you know, he sinned and then he covered it up and there's consequences to that. And all of that to say is, you know, we're going to see that David just has heartbreak because of his family the rest of his life. And so my heart and my hope is that we would continue um, to follow after the Lord. We would be a people who have integrity. We would be a people that honor the Lord in our decisions and that God will pour out generational blessing um, to, to our families. And my heart and my hope is that we pass our faith on to our children. You know, we're in a spot as, as American Christians where for generations we had done kind of this beautiful job of, of uh, raising our children to know and love Jesus and follow Jesus. And it feels like in the last generation or two, we're really starting to struggle passing that faith along. And so we have to be a people who not only know the word of God and love the word of God, we have to be a people who are living for Jesus, vibrantly connected to him so that we can understand that this is the, our, our children's best chance of seeing who God is, is by seeing parents that are faithful to, to the Lord and that truly know Jesus and are walking every single day. And that is what will cause our, our children to not only love Jesus, but to walk with them all of the days of their lives as well. My, my, my hope is that we understand that when we're faithful to, to the Lord, he pours out blessing on us, but that we, we also understand that when we transgress and are disobedient, um, there are consequences for those actions. And so, um, you know, let us hold on to Jesus. Let us walk with Jesus every single day. Let us be a people that are in prayer. Let us be a people um, who are basically taking even our own children by the hand and walking with the Lord until they're strong enough to walk with the Lord on their own. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your word. I just thank you so much that you show. Um, once again, David is one of the most wonderful people in the scripture. Um, and the way that he served you and loved you. He's, he's called a man after your own heart. And Lord, I just, um, I just thank you that in addition to the amazing things about David that you showed us, I just thank you so much that you showed us the downside that you showed, you know, that he had chinks in his armor and he had some character flaws and he, he made some really poor decisions, but he also repented. And Lord, even as we're seeing the fallout in his family, I just pray that you would just help us to be encouraged to go, you know what, you know, even though, um, 
you know, even though these circumstances happen and even in our own lives, when, when we're trying to be faithful to you and walk with you, sometimes we have to go through hardship and difficulty, even with our own families. I just pray that we would just hold on to you and continue to trust you in all things. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you all. Have a great week.